From South Carolina Public Radio, this is the South Carolina Lead. I'm your host, Gavin Jackson, and this episode was recorded on March 25th, 2024 from South Carolina Public Radio Studios here in Columbia. We have a programming note for you right at the top. Alert, alert, programming note. We will have one episode next week due to spring break. That's right. Look for that one episode to drop on Tuesday, and we will be back on our normal schedule following Tuesday and Saturday. So spring break, folks. But in this episode, we catch up with Bruce Bannister, House Ways and Means Committee Chairman, to discuss the $13.2 billion budget that was sent to the Senate the other week, which I know you've heard so much about, but you're going to hear even more about it because that's what's going on at the State House. <laughs> this is my podcast. You listen to what I say. And we'll also tell you what's going on in the Senate and the House, as well as what's on the governor's schedule for the week. And if you're thinking we're just going to be talking about state budgets, well, you are wrong, folks, because we're going to check out what earmarks are in the federal budget that Senator Lindsey Graham secured recently. And we have a report from Victoria Hansen on North Charleston's new mayor, Reggie Burgess. The lead loves hearing from everyone. That's why we have a voice mailbox set up at 803-563-7169. You can call anytime, day or night, and leave us a message up to three minutes long about what's going on in your world. Like I said, it's spring break. Maybe you're going somewhere fun. Maybe you're taking the lead on the road with you. Let us know where you are. It's like taking a picture with your school flag in the background or something. If you know Ohio State people, they do the OHIO wherever they are. Uh, Instead of doing that, we discourage that at all costs. You can call us and tell us where you are, 803-563-7169. And thank you. We're seven weeks away from the end of the legislative session. I know, I know, time flies when you're having fun. And we're in the middle of the session, and we are slowly descending into the final weeks of it. The House passed its $13.2 billion budget, and we've discussed it here before. But I want to bring you my recent chat with House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Bruce Bannister. He sat down with me on This Week in South Carolina, and I opened by asking him what the focus of this budget was, the second one he's crafted since becoming chairman. We made some commitments to teachers, so we, we continue to go towards that $50,000 starting salary. Pretty big jump from 42 to 47, so a starting teacher would have 47000 as their starting salary. Uh, and then we continue to add raises and additional compensation to teachers at every scale. So a big push to, to keep our teachers, get good people into education. Uh, veterans, we made some commitments to veterans and, and we honored that in this budget with the, the veterans' homes and, and the other renovations that we're making there. Uh, taxpayers, we said, listen, we're going to reduce your income tax by 0.1% every year until we hit that 6% income tax number. Uh, and we kept that. That was a $100 million of additional tax relief in this year's budget. Uh, that feels good to say, hey, we're going to do it and then to follow through with those things. Uh, Reserves in South Carolina are as high as they've ever been. Mm -hmm. Another thing we promised, we won't have another 2008 where we cut government services and we close state offices. Uh, So we have the reserves, we feel like, to weather that kind of economic downturn so taxpayers won't get hit with, they they can't go to the DMV on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. We have limited hours. So we're hopeful that commitment to saving for that rainy day was a good thing. We got the lowest debt we've ever had in the history of South Carolina. We can borrow up to 5% and we're at like 0.2% of yeah. our, our general fund revenue. So we have a lot of flexibility if we needed to make a substantial um, investments in South Carolina or that opportunity presented itself. We have a lot of room with our, our debt ceiling to, to do that and the revenues there to cover those debt payments. We're not going to borrow money anytime soon. No. But it's nice to know you have that, what I'll call an equity line. If, if, if there was something that we really needed to invest in, we'd have the money to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing that kind of the opportunity presented itself, the HEX funds, w- when Act 3 exemption. Yeah, when Act 3A passed, we said, hey, if there's ever a surplus uh, on the one penny sales tax, mm-hmm. we'll give that back to the taxpayer on property tax relief. Uh, and so we kind of honored that with the, the 500 million additional owner-occupied property tax relief uh, I understand the Senate was talking about it today. I'm sure it will look different at the end of the day. Uh, but we, we believe strongly that that money should go back to taxpayers, which is what we promised them. 
And then the, in addition to teacher pay uh, increases, that, that is quite a substantial jump. Are you going to get to that $50,000 next year or shortly thereafter? So if, what do the, you think? if the economy continues to be on fire like it has over the past several years, mm -hmm. then we're, we're looking at next year being the year that we could, we'll be a year early from our commitment originally, but if we hit 50 next year, we're certainly going to try to do that. Do you think you go beyond that at that point? I mean, it's still $50,000, it's still a red hot labor market, it's still hard to keep and retain teachers. Is it just become more of a, so, a you know, cost of living increase more at that point? So we, we won't quit on our commitment to public education, and we're going to uh, like reassess once we get to that 50000 okay. Uh, that's sort of what all the experts said. We were so low and so far behind the Southeast average. 50 was sort of the number they said. If you want people to commit to the education field and they want to be professional teachers where they feel like they're being honored for that sacrifice and doing what they do, mm -hmm. 50 is the number you got to get to. If you want those people to stay. And so it, it, that's sort of our goal. We'll reassess once we, once we get there. And, and maybe the next thing teachers need is something else that they want us to invest in, so we'll, we'll look at that. And then there's also money in your budget for state employee pay raises as well as um, pay raises for SLED and law enforcement as well, right? That's right, that's right. Gotcha. So we, we continue our commitment to law enforcement with pay raises and making sure they have the facilities and the, the equipment they need. And then state employees, we understand the, the lowest paid state employees get hit the hardest with changes in the economy, inflation, other things that hit that disposable income that they don't have. Mm -hmm. So we try to back in so they get at least that minimum raise. And then in our budget, we did a 1.5% for everyone else above. It's either a $1,000 or 1.5% mm -hmm. raise, whichever is greater. Uh, but Chairman, tell me more about the tax relief in this House budget proposal. I was watching the Senate subcommittee hearing about this, and there, there might be some concern, or I guess it was the Senate Finance Committee where they were hearing uh, about the current revenue state. And is there any concern about what this kind of tax relief would do for homeowners one year versus the next year not having that, that money coming to them in terms of rebates? Sure, and the, the biggest complaints we've heard is from the counties who don't want that property tax bill to go way down yeah. for those owner-occupied homes and then go back up when the money's not there the following year. Yeah. And I understand the Senate has some legitimate concerns about homeowners whose escrow and their mortgages would change year to year based on what last year's taxes were. So they'd get a big refund one year, then they would withhold too little and, and then have to pony up the next year to catch up those the escrows. Mm -hmm. And so they, they have a legitimate concern that people may be caught off guard the second year when that tax reduction isn't there. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at that. I mean, they, they have a legitimate point. We'll, that'll be part of the Congress Committee yeah. and maybe H2 will we'll take a closer look at what would be a sustainable annual property tax relief that we could fund out of those surplus revenues. Uh, less than three minutes left. I want to ask you about just how revenues are doing. You had less recurring revenue this year, but you still have uh, requests totaling $1.7 billion for recurring money, $3 billion for non-recurring. How do you judge that, and what's the situation with revenues right now? Are they stabilizing after having such sugar highs in our economy? So we, we did sort of hit a, a strange point with COVID. We had a continuing resolution for that year, so we didn't spend any of the additional recurring or non-recurring dollars. So we had that one-time dollar amount kind of pile on top of a really hot economy coming out of COVID, where we saw huge increases in sales tax and travel and tourist spending. Uh, and South Carolina was one of those early states that was open and generating revenue before everyone else, mm -hmm. along with the ARPA relief and the other federal funds that came down. So we had sort of a, a meeting of all the good things a lot of extra dollars, and now we're seeing the, the economy's not slowing down in terms of it looks like it's gonna go negative, but the amount of new dollars is coming back to a normal level. So mm -hmm. we're sort of seeing it go back to what we would consider normal, sustainable growth. And Chairman, with about 30 seconds left, tell me about working with the Senate. The Senate now has this budget and the Finance Committee. They're gonna debate it in the middle of April. Uh, do you see any issues in the future being a little contentious? You guys seem like things might be a little bit better this year than last year. How do you see it going forward? In every negotiation, there's two sides. We will find a middle ground. We will fulfill our constitutional duty to pass a, a balanced budget at the end of the day, funding state government. Uh, what that looks like and where the rub is, we'll find out shortly. You can catch that full interview on youtube.com slash South Carolina ETV, along with all of our great stories and content and so much more. That's where it all lives.
Now let's look at what's on tap at the State House this week. Yay! In the Senate, senators have set their bill S95 for special order. This bill deals with making the Comptroller General, the state's chief accountant, an appointed position by the governor with confirmation by the Senate instead of being popularly elected as it currently is. This comes amid the accounting controversy that shocked the state last year when $3.5 billion was overlooked over a decade. <gasps> no money was missing. Phew. I know, I know. But the oversight occurred when the state switched accounting systems. Mm-hmm. Long-serving Comptroller General Richard Ekstrom resigned as a result of the oversight. The Senate Finance Committee continues to hold budget subcommittee meetings as well. Over in the House, they are expected to begin debate on House Speaker Merle Smith's utility bill, H-5118, known as the South Carolina 10-Year Energy Transformation Act. Should garner quite the debate. The governor will chair the State Fiscal Accountability Authority, or SFA, meeting Tuesday morning to approve major spending projects that were previously approved by the Joint Bond Review Committee. Big items on the agenda include the issuance of $111 million in economic development bonds for Project Agave. No, it's not a tequila company. Oh, darn it. This has been reported as the third round of funding for the Envision Automotive Energy Supply Company. That's a battery cell plant investment in Florence County. The $2 billion capital investment by the company is expected to produce 2,000 jobs with production starting in 2026. That's the EV industry folks in South Carolina. Also on the agenda, $102 million in general obligation bonds for the University of South Carolina's new health sciences campus in the Bull Street District. The university says that the campus will provide state-of-the-art space for clinical education and bring together eminent researchers to help meet South Carolina's health challenges. The initial stage of the health sciences campus will include a medical education building to house the School of Medicine Columbia and a multidisciplinary research building. Current plans call for construction to begin in 2025 and completion in 2027. This would move the USC School of Medicine from its current home on the Dorn Veterans Affairs Hospital campus. Now let's jet on up to Washington briefly. We're six months into the current federal fiscal year, and the government is officially funded through the end of it. Hey, way to go, Congress. Now this goes until the end of September when the fiscal year ends. And we're going to do it all over again. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's how it works. Now this follows the vote by the House on the $1.2 trillion spending package last week, which the Senate approved early Saturday morning by a vote of 74 to 24, sending the bill to President Joe Biden for his signature. Senator Lindsey Graham, along with 24 other Republicans and 47 Democrats and two independents, backed the spending deal. Senator Tim Scott, with 21 other Republicans, one Democrat, Colorado Senator Michael Bennett, and one independent, Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont, voted against the measure. Like we said, Senator Lindsey Graham voted in support of the funding measure, which also included more than $70 million in earmarks for several local projects involving higher education, emergency preparedness, workforce development, and more. Bringing home the bacon. (laughs) There are millions for the expansion of nursing and healthcare education and facilities and equipment for Aiken Technical College, Claflin University, Coker University, Lander University, Newberry College, University of South Carolina, and USC Lancaster and USC Upstate. There's millions for equipment and technology at Francis Marion University, Greenville Technical College, and Midlands Tech. Graham also secured millions for hospitals across the state, including $11.2 million for the emergency department at Ann Med Health in Anderson, $4.3 million for cancer treatment at MUSC Health Orangeburg, $8 million for improved health care access at Roper St. Francis Hospital in North Charleston, and $10.7 million to Prisma Health Greenville to increase hospital capacity for cardiovascular procedures. If you thought the earmarks stopped there, I got news for you, buddy. We got some more. Awesome. Millions more allocated for emergency operations centers in Cherokee, Carleton County, and Dillon County, as well as $7 million for the overhaul of the State Emergency Operations Center in West Columbia. It's going to be quite the place out there. Not that we want anything to happen, but uh, a new EOC wouldn't be bad. Graham has always been a supporter of earmarks in the budget and never fails to bring home the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't hurt when you're up for re-election in 2026. Now we're going to go to a report from Victoria Hansen, South Carolina Public Radio's Charleston-based reporter. Victoria has this feature report on North Charleston's first new mayor in 30 years, Reggie Burgess. The city's former long-serving police officer turned chief in 2018 turned mayor when he won office last November in a 10-person race. Reggie Burgess is the first black person to hold the office. Here's Victoria. As a child, Reggie Burgess dreamed of winning a gold medal, running track in the Olympics. He remembers his first grade teacher asked him why. 
I said, I'll, I'll win it. And I'll come back here to America and I'll sell it so I can give it to my mother so we can get off the projects. Burgess grew up in the projects of South Carolina's third largest city, North Charleston, a city he now serves as the first African-American mayor. Where I came from, you would have never imagined that I would be here. The 58-year-old was sworn in two months ago. As mayor of the city of North Charleston. He believes his past will help him shape North Charleston's future. So help me God. So help me God. Burgess was raised by a single mother who at 17 quit high school to work three jobs, supporting him and a younger brother. He says she made sure the kids were fed, bringing home food from restaurant jobs, but he rarely saw her eat. Sometimes she returned from work with bandaged arms after being burned in kitchens by popping grease. Burgess worried, but says his mom explained the bandages didn't always cover injuries. She said, oh, no, son. She said, uh, mom, I had to sell some blood. She said, yeah, I had to get some extra money. That's, what, that's, that's, that's sacrifice. Excuse me. That's, that's sacrifice. Sacrifice for the good of others. Burgess shared that lesson recently with students at Charleston Southern University. And don't you know people, that same woman, that came to my life in 1965 at 17 years old, wasn't even my mother. He tells the students the only mother he's ever known is really a friend of the woman who gave birth to him. Hunter sit in silence as Burgess talks about the man who became his father, marrying his mom and moving the family out of the projects. Together, they attended church where Burgess's faith grew. He went to college in Maryland on a scholarship, running track and playing football. But when he returned to North Charleston, Burgess noticed his historically black neighborhood had changed. Elders no longer relaxed on porches. Kids with guns hung out on street corners. That's when I realized that drugs had impacted my community. So I said to myself, what can I do? How can I make things better? Burgess decided then to become a police officer, serving the city for 34 years. He eventually became North Charleston's first African-American police chief. Students who heard his story, like Amaris Belial, say it reflects their school's Christian values. Just how, you know, the Bible tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves. We should, too, do that together, especially for the black community. Burgess knows he faces challenges. He's North Charleston's first new mayor in nearly 30 years. Already, there are questions about who he's hired. And census numbers show roughly one in six people in his community still lives in poverty. He says he's breaking ground on attainable housing and meeting with grocery store chains to fill food deserts. But the 2015 shooting death of an unarmed man, Walter Scott, at the hands of a former officer still lingers like a haze over the city. Every human being ha have biases. The first thing we need to do is acknowledge that. Burgess says as police chief, he worked to address those biases. He invited Scott's brother to talk yearly to police recruits. Burgess still walks the streets he once patrolled. I want to get to that place where there's no more hurt. We don't have to talk about affordable housing, attainable housing. Nobody's looking at the skin colors and gender. Burgess believes it can be achieved by recognizing and serving the needs of others. Thanks for that report, Victoria. You can find that and more on SouthCarolinaPublicRadio.org. And while you're there, hit that donate button, folks. Now to the wind down. We have a special guest. A little tease. Welcome to our wind down section, our little break from the news. We're glad you're here. A.T. Shire, producer of the podcast, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. I'm glad that I'm the only one here, you're yes. actually <laughs> not the only one Let here. Let me light monitor. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the, the, the clearing of the throat so of Abby sorry. Stowell. Just something there. The illustrious Abby You guys Stowell. might remember her from past wind down episodes where we talked about ranch, ranch. and pizza. <laughs> yes. Today, this is a bittersweet one because while we are happy to have Abby in studio, it's bitter because she is leaving us after seven years at mm -hmm. ETV to go to the Department of Administration. Mm. So not too far, still in Columbia, no, so to yeah. city, but I might see y'all more because of your time at the State House because mm. I will be on State House ground. Yeah, oh, scary. So Which I is hear. kind of a lucky little upgrade in a sense. You get a window, yeah. but at the same time, there's a downgrade. A, there's a, a severe little downgrade. Little bit of a downgrade <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I am getting put in a cubicle. I've never had a cubicle before <sighs> never. in my 
however many 14 years of professional. Always an office girl. Always an office Lucky girl. Lucky duck. You've never known 14 the... years in an office is uh-huh. pretty good. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, From the get go. Honestly, you had a good run. You yeah. Know? You I had did. a good I run. Did. Yeah. And now you get a big window. I, mean, I do get a window. I'm here for that. I'm just not here for cubicle work. I mean, you're going to have to call us and let us know. I, I want <laughs> I you. New, I'll new call into the podcast. <laughs> From the cubicle, so everyone can hear that's, me. That's yeah, no, they're say. chewing the right pros now. I can hear them of, chewing. Oh my right god! Now. You I, don't like people chewing. Imagine I hate hearing it. four people's lunch at once. I cannot handle. I will like full send. <laughs> you know, viral yes. crunch on the floor, like convulsions. I yeah. can't do it. You're, I you're one of the people that hates hearing other I people. I do. Eat. So there's, it's yes. a um, neurological condition. Of course, you know. It yes. is called misophonia. Mm. And it's and all about me, 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 me. So no, am I in the misophonia? Thank you. <laughs> but essentially, it's where noises like actually fill you with rage. Yes, I got everyone. Let's friends. make a noise for Abby I'm right now. I'm not like I will. I can Abby, walk out. I would say that you're very lucky because right before you were here, mm. Gavin scarfed down three <laughs> plates of Two plates slop of chicken pot of the pie. chicken pot pie. Yeah, we have Pudge going on right now, so they the, always have food and the radio. So I'm just like <laughs> plate of yeah. food. You it, I can't do it. Really I cannot. I mean, I haven't gone for home for lunch. I just had a Celsius today, yeah. so I need a little. I need a little substance. Like it's bad. Like I make Amy. You spit out her gum when she's around me. That's mm-hmm. how bad it so is. So we can't do a- any AMSR right now. ASMR. ASMR. No, ASMR. thank you. There are some sounds I can handle. It's just mine. Mine more so are the eating noises. Mm. Okay. Humming and whistling. Oh, you hate a whistler? I hate whistlers. Oof. I cannot it can handle be, it whatsoever. It can be very distracting. Um, and unless then the things, unless they're going somewhere with it, like something yeah. really good, but not just well, an just occasional whistle. Like even in the songs, it gets to me. Like yeah, songs that have it in there. Um, but then the other is like keyboard will probably get to me in its central. It's more mm. so the mouse clicking that's like mouse excessive clicking? or things if it's like excessive, that. Like yeah, it can get any really... clicking thing. Like part of it, I just need to find the source of it. And if I find the you source of it, know. I'm like, okay, then that like once I find the source, I can sometimes I'll get more mad if it's somebody I don't like, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But then sometimes <laughs> I'll be like, okay, so that's something that can't be helped. It is what it is. Am, like, I, I, life is going to be a change. I would, I would yeah. really like to know, Abby, am yeah. I your most nightmare cube neighbor, Ben? I don't. Here's the difference. With <laughs> I you, I, I can tell you. Yeah, I can be like, AT, I need you to spit that gum out. <laughs> AT, I need you to stop slurping whatever it is in that cup. Yeah. I like, surprisingly enough, am I a direct and honest person? Yes. Do I also want everybody to like me? Also, yes. Mm, so until one. I get to that point of friendship with someone mm. to where I can be like, you know me, so you know, like, well, you do I'm, know I'm crazy a little bit. But, like, now that you know me, like, you will still like me, even sure. though I'm about to tell sure. you this. <laughs> so you have to befriend people just so you can tell so them So I have to, to get stop. to a certain level or... And I think we are at that level, AT. Mm-hmm. I also think you're that type of person that is more approachable in general oh, to where you. I could tell you that. A lot of and interper- not, interpersonal you know. communications going on here. Yeah, and that's well, I am a communications hear. professional. Abby, so. I'm going to miss, A, your sparkling attitude every day. Mm-hmm. But also the, all- the ray of positivity <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that I bring everywhere. I <laughs> Which I, I, I also enjoy in a workplace mm-hmm. because yeah. I'm also a sparkling and positive person. But mm-hmm. the candy that you would keep in your mm-hmm. office to facilitate mm-hmm. such friendships so then you could tell Sometimes people to stop Sometimes your lunch. Chewing. The candy Sometimes Gavin's or lunch. Oh, yeah, that would Gavin's <laughs> intrusion of my full snack drawer, yes. which he did Saves graciously so replenish times. once <laughs> over the seven years I've been like here. Multiple Cliff Bars. And one day I'm like, oh, look, I'm at Walmart. Yes. Like, I bought like the mini Cliff Bars, like the oh, six pack. Yep. I'm like, Abby, I, I should hit her back. I've stolen these. <laughs> I've stolen these. I've stolen these like... <laughs> Ten times this amount, but here, let me I'm feel good about you. myself. I would notice. This is the Gavin I would notice what snacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would notice what snacks had been in there a little bit longer than the others. Mm-hmm. I was willing to both eat them ma- both maternity <laughs> leaves. I came back to fully empty drawer because Gavin was like, "Well, she's not going to be." They were his lunch. Those, those are tough times. Here we go. Um, but he, he loves to eat out of a drawer. Mm-hmm. He loves drawer. he loves slop mm-hmm. Any drawers. free food in the office. Vince will back me up on this. It is fair game. He's going to live here. off the land. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You're a forager. That's for sure. But I do I'm find an urban it. forager. Because you are say. like also, you care about what you put in your body to an extent. Uh, a, little. Until free, a little. Until, until it's free. Because yeah. 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 like, 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 you'll care about damned. like needing to do the healthier yes. things. But like if it's free, the rules go out of the window. That's the hardest part. Like the cookies. I'm like, well, they're right here. It's free. Yeah. Well, You're the biased. Pot, you don't like anything sweet. Like the chicken pot pie you just scarfed down is not going to be the most nutritious thing in the world. No, there's a lot of salt. I could tell there's a lot yeah. of salt yeah. in that thing. But at the same, and then I also did the uh, with the sandwich, the chicken, the 
breakfast sandwich there this yeah. morning. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. well, might mm-hmm. as well have one of these from mm-hmm. Flying Biscuit. Like, I, I heard not the best thing. I brought my own. Well. I was talking to uh, our our pledge director, uh, mm-hmm. Amanda, and she said that, Gavin, you're going to be on pledge tomorrow, Tuesday, Tuesday night. Tuesday, if you're yeah. listening to this day Ooh. of, Dave, Gavin tonight, will be yeah. on. I'll be on Wednesday. But I'll she, be eating the whole time. She said that. <laughs> you'll say a word. Don't. She was like, I, Please don't do it on I befriended Gavin by giving him a breakfast sandwich. I was like, oh. Did he eat it out of your hand? <laughs> and he, Gavin is truly like a wild animal. Mm-hmm. That if you if mm-hmm. if you did the E.T. But he'll Reese's keep coming thing, back. if you laid out the Reese's pieces, you'd get them eventually. Mm-hmm. Get, it wouldn't be hard. Mm-hmm. How'd we flip him? Oh, he's just starving. <laughs> oh yeah, he was so hungry. But you're not starving. You just do it because it's free. Like it's, if it's free, it's, you it's would a, still it's eat a, it. It's a natural defense mechanism. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> known by my people and my brothers. When you grow with two brothers, lots of unpack. It's a lot. Just see me in high school in the in the lunchroom you gonna finish those fries <laughs> oh finish those fries? what are those taste like i had a friend like that what are those taste like <laughs> no you have to ask like matter. leading questions that's not as obvious yeah. that you're asking I, for it but like i would wait till the very yeah. end and then i'm like okay so i see that the napkins are on the plate so, mm-hmm. the, chick- so. the chicken tenders well, see, are still mine's free different my husband knows because i have attachment to french fries oh and so he knows i'm that glad he, you can admit that thank you for admitting that anything that's fried like, thank you for spilling bring me um, <laughs> kudos mama for sharing you have to ask me at the beginning because as it starts to dwindle uh-huh. I get emotional attachments well, yeah. to the ones that are remaining. And yeah, you're you're. So supply- if you're waiting yeah. till the end, you're chancing it. Yeah. So if you really want one, you have to ask at the initial get go. Do it in the mm. beginning when there's ample supply, yeah. not when I'm. Scared. Not I like, love hey, learning about these things out. on your last day here, <laughs> uh-huh. Abby. Well, with all that in mind, Gavin, thank you so much. But Abby, sadly, we must close this. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for. I honor you. I treasure Applause. you. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you for your years of thank service you. in these trenches yeah. that we call ETV, the <laughs> mines, the, toiling in the these mines. Candy lined yeah. mines. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. But at least they're in office. Mines. Um, Abby, yes, thank, thank you for all that you've done. And also, please call us, 803 563 7169, and let us know what's new with you over at Department of Admin and how things are going. And honestly, I think with your, I can say, disorder, that mm-hmm. they might upgrade yeah. you to an well, office. Well, if I really play into it a lot and like, and or <laughs> if they really. <laughs> you know, really make me mad initially because it is a neurological thing Oh yeah, that makes me angry. So yes. maybe my rage can scare them into getting me into an office. I well, just I'm... think you, as first day in there, go, there's a podcast <laughs> you can listen to about this. So anyway, Gavin, close it. Well, yeah. Say the credit. Before I get into a rage, I'll close it all out. And again, you can leave us a message like Abby will in the future at 803-563-7169. You can always leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and show us your appreciation by staying up to date with the latest news on SCTV.org and SouthCarolinaPublicRadio.org. And don't forget to support your local newspapers. For the South Carolina lead, I'm Gavin Jackson. Be well, South Carolina. How's the pot pie? Oh, I don't think I should have any more pot pie. I don't think that chicken was cooked.